They were among the greatest and most noble creatures in Middle-earth. They soared through the skies, rescuing allies, fighting in war, and their image was even used as a warning to those falling into darkness. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the Great Eagles of Middle-earth. The Great Eagles came into being during the early days of Arda. In Tolkien's later writings, they predate even the awakening of the elves. It is said they were devised by the king of the Valar, Manwë. One of the earliest deeds we hear of is that the eagles of Manwë would travel back and forth between Middle-earth and the great mountain of Teniquetil, bringing news to the lord of the Valar of what transpired across the sea. The lord of the eagles and greatest of their kind is Thorondor, who is said to have a wingspan of 30 fathoms, or roughly 180 feet. After the Noldor leave Valinor in their exile from the Blessed Realm, Manwë sends Thorondor and his eagles to live in Middle-earth, watching over and assisting the Eldar as they're able. At first, the eagles keep their eyries at the top of Thangorodrim, the very mountain where Morgoth's fortress of Angband was located. As Morgoth had no air forces of his own, he was helpless to do anything about the presence of these foes, if he indeed knew their location. In one of the earliest cases of the eagles helping the elves, Thorondor helps Fingon rescue Mithros from the side of Thangorodrim. Morgoth had captured Mithros and hung him by his arm from the mountainside. Thorondor bears Fingon and Mithros to safety after the daring rescue. After this, Thorondor and his eagles move to the Chrysaigrim, a mountain range which helped conceal the hidden kingdom of Gondolin. When Torgon builds Gondolin in 116, Thorondor becomes a guardian of the city, helping the elves to preserve its secrecy in defiance of Morgoth. Due to the diligence of the eagles, the orcs are unable to approach the ford of Brithiac, or the mountains near the city. Centuries later in 456, the High King Fingolfin rides across the plain of Anfaugli to challenge Morgoth to single combat. While he would permanently wound the Dark Lord by stabbing him in the foot, Fingolfin would ultimately fall in the duel. Morgoth no doubt would have defiled the body of the king, but in that moment, Thorondor attacks the Dark Lord, scratching him across the face, giving Morgoth yet another scar and saving the body of the king. Thorondor bears the body back to Gondolin, where Turgon raises a cairn over the body of his father. In 458, the brothers Hurin and Huor become lost in Dimbar after a battle with orcs. The men are spotted by Thorondor and taken to the hidden city, where they are welcomed by Turgon. After a time in the city, Turgon reluctantly allows the men to leave so that they may return to their realms and fight against the tyranny of Morgoth. The only condition is that they should depart in the same manner of their arrival, taken once again by the eagles. A short time later, in 466, Baron and Luthien infiltrate Angband itself to steal a Silmaril from Morgoth's crown. As they flee the fortress, Thorondor once again aids the free peoples of Middle-earth. Alongside two of his vassals and descendants, Gwaihir and Landroval, they save Baron and Luthien from the pursuit of Morgoth's servants. After the man Tuor comes to Gondolin with a warning from Ulmo, the eagles redouble their watch over the city. While this enables Gondolin to go undiscovered the longest of any elven realm, it would be betrayed by Meglin, and Morgoth's forces would come for the city. In the fall of Gondolin, the eagles, led by Thorondor, help protect the survivors fleeing through the mountains. When a force of orcs and a balrog come after the refugees, Glorfindel stays behind to fight the balrog. Meanwhile, the eagles take on the force of orcs. These acts ensure the safety of many, including the young child Eärendil, the father of Elrond and Elros. Just 35 years later, Beleriand would be engulfed in the War of Wrath between the forces of Morgoth and the host of the Valar. The eagles would fight alongside the army in the 40-year conflict. As we've discussed in earlier videos, in the waning days of the conflict, Morgoth is facing defeat 
when he unleashes his last and greatest weapon, the winged dragons. The great eagles assemble under Thorondor to help Eärendil in his flying ship, engaging in an incredible aerial battle, the likes of which never seen before or since in Middle-earth. Alongside Eärendil, the great eagles are successful in destroying the majority of the dragons, sealing Morgoth's complete and utter defeat. After this battle, Thorondor is never mentioned again. What became of the great eagle, whether he fell in battle or went on to live throughout the Second Age, possibly in Valinor, we can only guess. His descendants, however, would play great roles in the rest of the history of Middle-earth. In the Second Age, in the island realm of Numenor, two great eagles lived in an eyrie in the king's house in the capital of Armenelos. This eyrie would be used until the reign of Tar Ankaliman, the 14th king of Numenor, who leads his people to open hostility against the Valar. Throughout their history, the Numenorians believed that three great eagles, known as the Witnesses of Manwe, were sent by the Valar to guard the summit of Menel Tarma, a sacred mountain where speaking was forbidden. During the three prayers, the three holy ceremonies throughout the Numenorean year, as the king approached the summit, the eagles would appear in the sky. The eagles were said to not only live at Menel Tarma and Armenelos, but also on the hills around Sorontil, in the northern area of Forostar. In their later years, as the Numenorians fall further and further into darkness and rebellion, Manwe sends clouds in the shape of an eagle as a warning to Numenor. And out of the west, there would come at times a great cloud in the evening, shaped as it were an eagle, with pinions spread to the north and the south, and slowly it would loom up, blotting out the sunset, and then uttermost night would fall upon Numenor. And some of the eagles bore lightning beneath their wings, and thunder echoed between sea and cloud. The eagles would not be heard from again until the later portion of the Third Age. By this time, a group of eagles live in the northern parts of the Misty Mountains, not far from the High Pass, which led from Rivendell to the east. Due to their proximity to Goblin Town beneath, these eagles often foiled and attacked the goblins who came outside the mountain. However, we know that the eagles did limit their travels, as they mention being hesitant of the bows of the woodmen in Mirkwood. These eagles were the ones who rescued Thorin, Bilbo, Gandalf, and the rest of the company from a group of goblins and wargs in 2941. They allow the group to stay in their eyries for the night before taking them to the Carrick. Later that year, they notice groups of goblins gathering throughout the Misty Mountains and assemble a force themselves. They fly to the Lonely Mountain, pursuing their enemies to the Battle of Five Armies, helping to ensure the defeat of the goblins. These eagles of the Misty Mountains are led by the Great Eagle. Now there's some debate here on whether this is a separate, unnamed eagle, also referred to as the King of All Birds, or if perhaps this was in fact Gwaihir, the Great Eagle seen in The Lord of the Rings. We learn in The Lord of the Rings that the eagles were friends of both Radagast the Brown and Elrond. From the eagles, they would learn of the gathering of wolves and orcs and the movements of the Nine Ringwraiths. When Gandalf meets Radagast in Eriador, Radagast unwittingly sends Gandalf into the treachery of Saruman. However, at Gandalf's behest, Radagast also instructed Gwaihir to bring any news to Orthanc. That fall, Gwaihir comes to Isengard, discovering Gandalf upon the pinnacle of Orthanc. Gwaihir, unable to bear the wizard a great distance, takes Gandalf to Edoras to find a horse so that he may ride to the Shire. The following year, after the Fellowship passes through Lorien, Galadriel sends Gwaihir to search for Gandalf. Gwaihir finds the wizard on the peak of Zaraxagil and bears him to Lothlorien, where he is clothed in white and given a new staff. One final time, at the climax of the War of the Ring, the Great Eagles would help the men of Middle-earth. They arrive at the Battle of the Morannon, helping the free peoples in their last desperate battle against the Dark Lord. 
As the One Ring is destroyed in Mount Doom, Gandalf turns to his friend, asking him to bear him one final time. Gwaihir, his brother Landroval, and Meneldor fly into Mordor, risking their lives to save Frodo and Sam from the fires of Mount Doom. From the very beginning to the final defeat of the second Dark Lord, the great eagles of Manwë were loyal friends to the free peoples of Middle-earth, coming to aid their allies when their help was most desperately needed. Now, if you're interested why it would be foolish to attempt flying the ring to Mordor, you'll have to hit that subscribe button because I'm currently planning the ultimate video to debunk this strategy, and you won't want to miss it here on Nerd of the Rings. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Jim Limber Davis, Jay Brakefield, Sky Carcass, Zetrock, Grand Strategy Nerd, The Dark Haired One, Salim Rahman, Slidebelts, Wyland, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.